Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to create an upgradable smart contract. That means that we are going to write a smart contract that will have a flaw, an error, a bug in the code. We will deploy that contract to the blockchain and then we will go back to our code, correct the bug and redeploy the contract. We will then point our function towards the corrected smart contract towards the fixed code and that will be our upgrade. ThirdWeb makes it super simple to do this upgrade and to create these upgradable contracts thanks to the ThirdWeb extensions, which is part of ThirdWeb's contract kit. So we're going to be using ThirdWeb's contract kit to build this all out and the, we are going to get started. You can open up your favorite IDE, your terminal. Let's create a smart contract. Let's dive into this example. Currently, 71.4% of people who watch our Web3 videos have not subscribed to the channel. So if you've taken away any value from what we're doing, can I ask just one small favor? Hit that subscribe button and join the 29%. Each week we are going to be airdropping a very special and rare third web NFT to 10 subscribers. As you can see, I'm here in my terminal and the first thing I'm going to do is use the third web CLI to create a new smart contract. So npx third web at latest create and then give it the contract flag, hit enter, let third web install. And it's going to ask us for a bunch of information. So we're going to call this one, this project, upgrade contract proxy, hit enter. We want to use forge. We want to call it a number contract and we want to use an empty contract, not one of the token contracts. And then we're going to let everything be installed it we can then cd into the upgrade contract proxy project and open it up in vs code let's make this full screen and you can see that this is the project that third web has built out for us it's got all of the scaffolding all of the setup done for us we don't have to worry about that we can just get straight into building the only thing to note is in the package.json you can see that we've got the third web contracts package installed here so if you are not starting out from scratch if you haven't been following step by step with us and you want to integrate this into an existing project of yours just make sure to install this this package and then you will be have access to all of the third web extensions. Let's close this, open up our source folder, contract.sol. We can start off by renaming this and let's call it number.sol. And of course, the contract also needs to be called number. And now that we've got that, we can get started with actually writing out our contract. So this contract number.sol is going to be our implementation. It is going to be the logic part of our upgradable contract. So it is going to be a stateless function that will contain the logic for how we can interact with the state. So to do that, we need to import two extensions from third web. The first one is going to be the upgradable.sol extension. And the second one is going to be the initializable.sol extension. So import from at third web dash dev forward slash contracts forward slash extension forward slash upgradable.sol. And the second one is going to also be from third web. So this is at third web dash dev forward slash contracts forward slash extension forward slash initializable dot sol. And now that we've got these two extensions imported, we have to make our smart contract inherit from them. So we're going to say contract number is upgradable and initializable. And then we can actually build out the contract itself. So instead of a constructor, because this is an upgradable implementation, we are going to use a function called initialize. Initialize is going to take in a uint256, and this is going to be called the initial value. This is going to be an external function, and we need to use the initializer modifier. This initializer modifier makes sure, makes sure that this function can only be called once. And inside this function, we're going to do three things. The first thing is we're going to require that the initial value is more than zero. And then we are going to set 
this variable called num equal to initial value, and we'll create this variable in a second. And then we're also going to set another variable called deployer equal to the message dot sender, and we will create these two variables in a second. And actually, let's just create those two variables now. So at the top of our function, let's create the two variables. We've got a uint 256 that is going to be public num, and we've got address public deployer, and now we've got these two variables created. This num is just there to alias this storage slot for our storage smart contract, because remember, this implementation is actually a stateless function, a stateless smart contract, and so this is just to alias the storage slot in the proxy contract, which is where our state, our storage is kept. And it is so that we can access it and interact with it with the next function that we're going to write, which is the, why is this all caps now, which is the double number function. So this double number function is how we are interacting with this um, variable. And in this function, we, or let's just, this function is going to be an external function. And inside this function, we want to double the number. However, this is where we're going to make our mistake. So what we should have is num should be equal to num times by two. However, because we want it to be incorrect for now, we're going to make it plus two. And so this is the error that we're going to correct when we upgrade our smart contract. And then finally, we need one more function, which is going to be an internal function. And this is going to be the authorize upgrade function. It takes in an address and it is an internal view function that actually overrides a function that we've inherited. And all that we are doing in here is requiring that the message.sender is equal to the deployer. And with all of this in place, we have completed our implementation function. We've completed the first part of our upgradable smart contract. And so this implementation contract is going to be, we're going to deploy it and then we can um, deploy the proxy smart contract as well. So the next step is we're going to write the proxy smart contract. So let's create a new file and let's call this proxy for number.sol. And let's just copy across this into here, paste that. In this smart contract, we're going to import also from third web one of the extensions. And this extension is going to be the proxy for upgradable.sol extension. So we are importing from third web dash dev forward slash contracts forward slash extension forward slash proxy for upgradable.sol and we can now write the actual contract which is going to be called proxy for number it needs to inherit the proxy for upgradable extension and then inside the smart contract we are simply going to have a constructor and this constructor is going to take in two arguments and then call the proxy for upgradable function. The first one is going to be the logic, the address of the logic or the address of the implementation smart contract. And the second is going to be called data. And this is the bytes data that make up the initialize function call. So we've got address and this is going to be logic. And then we've got bytes, which is in memory and it is called the variable is called data. And this is going to be payable. And we want it to be proxy for upgradable. And we're going to pass into here the logic and the data. And then we are done. Our proxy contract is ready, really simple, really straightforward. And third web's extensions just make it really, really simple. So as you can see in the implementation part of our upgradable contract, we've declared this variable here, which is really just an alias for the storage slot in the proxy contract. And then we've got the initialize function, which acts as our constructor. And we use the initializer modifier to ensure that it can only be called once. We've got our double number function, which is the way that we are interacting with the 
storage with the state and we have added or we have made it with an error so it is adding two instead of multiplying by two and we've got our authorized upgrade which is just requiring that the message.sender is actually the deployer of the contract and then in the proxy we've got the constructor which will point the this proxy to our logic which we can provide in the constructor of this um, of this smart contract and so with these contracts written we can open up our terminal and make it a little bit bigger. And inside here, we're going to deploy our contract, starting with the number.sol contract. And we're going to use the third web deploy to make it really simple and secure. So npx third web at latest deploy, hit enter, and let it install whatever it needs to install. It detects the project type, compiles the project. It will, we can choose. So we want to deploy the number contract. And then it uploads, pins the contract data to IPFS. And once that's done, it will provide us with a link to the dashboard where we can go to deploy the smart contract. But it should also redirect us if it opens up the correct window. And let's just give it a second to finish pinning the data there. Okay, now that it's deployed, let's copy this link and take it over here to Chrome, paste it in there. And now we are in the third web dashboard and we can deploy the number contract. We're going to deploy to the Gawley testnet and we have, you can select over here the, the network that you want to deploy it to. You can connect your wallet. So if I wasn't already connected, it would look like that. I'm going to click on connect my wallet and you can see here that I can switch networks to whichever one I want. I'm going to leave it there for now. And then I'm going to click on deploy now. And there are going to be two transactions that are going to pop up from MetaMask and going to confirm them. That's the first one. I'm going to give it a few seconds just to be manned. And then we will be able to get the second transaction. So that should come through any second now. Pending. There we go. Okay. So that's the first transaction done. Now we're going to get a second transaction. And we can click on confirm. And once this transaction is done, our contract will be deployed. We will then be able to go back and deploy the proxy contract because this, again, remember, is the implementation. It's the logic contract. And there we go. Success. We can now view our contract. So this is the third web contract explorer. This is the dashboard for interacting with the contract. You can see here, these are the functions that are available to us. We've got the, the double number function, which we will call soon and um, we've got the initialize and um, upgrade to upgrade to and call and so we've got all of these functions available to us over here and um, but before we start interacting with the smart contract let's go ahead and deploy our proxy because our proxy is actually how we are going to interact with this logic so let's head over back to our VS code, we're going to once again run npx third web at latest deploy, but this time we're going to deploy the proxy contract. Allow that to proceed. I'm going to give it a few seconds. We're going to select the proxy for number contract and we're going to allow it to pin the contract data to IPFS. And in a few seconds, it should give us a link like we had the last time which will take us into the browser to the dashboard. And when we deploy this contract, we're going to need to provide it with the logic address and the bytes data. So let's head back over here to the browser and you can see that now we are deploying the proxy for number. We need to provide it with the address of the logic and the bytes for the data. So where are we gonna get these two pieces of information from? The logic address is the contract address for the number contract which we had previously deployed. So back in the that tab of the third web dashboard, I'm gonna click on the address, it's copied, and I can then paste it into there. And for the data, we're gonna head back over to VS Code. I'm gonna close my terminal for now. I'm gonna open up the Explorer there. We're gonna create a new test. And this is going to, let's just open up this test, I suppose. And we're going to rename this and this test is going to be called initialize.t.sol instead of contract. 
sol dot p dot sol. So in the initialize dot t dot sol, and then inside the test, we're going to um, set it up a little bit differently. And uh, well, for starters, this hasn't been installed, so we need to actually just go ahead and um, add that. So that's going to be installed now, and then this error will go away. And once we've got that, then we need to also import our number contract. So we're going to import from the source folder, and we're going to get number.sol. And then we're going to, inside our tests, we're going to rename the contract. So contract um, contract test is going to be actually contract initialize test. A function set up public, we can leave the same. We're going to have a new, uh, or we're going to rename this instead of test example, we're going to call it test initialize data. And inside here, we're going to set our initial value. So you went 256 initial value is going to be equal to five. And then we're going to um, log out the call that we are making. So number dot initialize. And then we're going to add in the or, or pass in the initial value. And then we should be sorted. We need to add a semicolon. There we go. And now our test is set up. So we're going to call the contract with this initial value. And we're going to log out the call. And this is going to be the data that we're going to pass in over here to our proxy for number to the constructor so that it can initialize the number contract correctly. So in our terminal, then we're going to use this test port test dash. Let's just close that one second. There we go. Now it's easier to read. Port test dash dash match dash contract initialize dash vv and hit enter. And you can see that this is the log. This is the data that we need to pass in. I'm going to copy that, paste it here into the dashboard, and now we can click on Deploy Now. So we're going to have our first transaction again pop up. I'm going to confirm that. We're going to give it a few seconds, and then we should get our second transaction, and then our contract, our proxy for number will actually be deployed. So let's give that a few seconds, and still pending, but it shouldn't take long to deploy this. And then once this is done, we will be able to actually interact with our smart contract from the dashboard. And this is not yet approved. So let's approve this transaction. And um, that's the second transaction coming through. So this is nearly done. And then we will, once this is deployed, we will actually be able to interact with our smart contract from the dashboard. And you'll notice that it will, we will be able to interact with the number contract. So let's wait for this to load and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that it's loaded, you can see that this was called the proxy for number, but now it's just called the number contract and it is different to this number contract. And you can see from the contract address. So they both start in a similar way, 0x68eb, but look at the end, 1d, 1d. And here, same story, 0 x 6b but look at the end 0cb2 so these are two different contracts and they are this is the proxy contract that is proxy or interacting with the number contract that we had previously deployed and from here we can start off interacting with the contract so let's just start off getting the number that is currently set to and this should be set to 5 which is the initial value that we've 
passed in. So it is, it's set to five. And now we can double, num we can double the number. Let's click on execute. It's going to yeah, give us a transaction that we have to confirm and approve. And once this is done, then we can check the number again. And if it was doubling the number, then five times by two should give us 10. But since we've got the error in our smart contract, it shouldn't double it, it should add two. So it should give us seven, not 10. And so let's wait for this transaction to complete. There we go, the transaction's done. Now let's check the number again. And it's just loading it gives us seven. So it didn't double five, it just simply added two. So you can see that it is actually error ring, right? It's giving us the wrong logic in our implementation smart contract. So to fix this, we're going to upgrade our smart contract. To perform the upgrade, we're gonna head back over to VS Code. We're gonna close our terminal. We're gonna close our test. We're gonna go back to number.sol. We're going to fix our smart contract. So instead of a plus, we're going to have the multiplication. We're going to open up our terminal again, and we're going to go through the deployment again. We're going to go npx third web at latest deploy. And this time we are once again going to deploy the number contract. So we're going to click on proceed, let it do what it needs to do. And we're going to select the number, the number contract, not the proxy for number. And again, it's going to pin the data to IPFS. It's going to go through this process again. Once this is done, we will then be able to go back to our dashboard to, um, to deploy this contract. And then we will take this contract address and pass it into the upgrade to function on our proxy. And that will allow us to um, upgrade the contract to this new implementation and fix the error that is in our contract. So it opened up the dashboard for us automatically. You can see again, we are deploying once this loads, we are deploying the number contract. And again, to the Gawley testnet, there we go. We can click on deploy now. And again, it's going to give us two transactions. This is the first transaction. Give it a few seconds. And here we've got the second transaction. So there's the second transaction. And then once this is done again, we're going to take this address. We're going to pass it to the upgrade to function over here on our proxy. And this will upgrade our proxy that it will switch it from pointing to the flawed contract. It will change it instead of interacting with this flawed contract, it will use the logic and the implementation of our new contract, which has just been deployed and is busy loading here in the dashboard. So we can already copy this address, which is great. So we've copied the address, we can paste it in here and we're going to execute this function. And this function, we'll obviously need to approve it, confirm it. And once this is done, we will be able to try the double number function again and see what it is. So let's wait for this transaction to complete. And then we will test to see if our contract has actually been upgraded. So again, this proxy is the one that you are always interacting with, right? And all that we are changing is the, the logic that it is using to interact. So the upgrade two is complete. Let's start off just by seeing what the number actually is saved in the moment at the moment in the contract. And this, is a number seven, it shouldn't have changed because remember the proxy contract is the storage contract. That's where our state is being held and that doesn't change. All that is changing is the implementation, the logic that we are using to interact with this state. So the seven is there from the previous calls that we've done to the double number. So we go here to the double number and we're gonna call this again. We're gonna execute it again. We're going to have to um, pay, uh, uh, you confirm the transaction. And once this transaction is done, we should be able to go back to double number. And instead of adding to like it did last time when it was interacting with the flawed contract, it should actually double the number. So double seven should give us 14. And that should be the number once we have tested this out properly. Okay. So the double number transaction completed. Let's head back over to the number function and wait for it to get us the number. And there we go, it's 14. And we have successfully upgraded our contract. Instead of interacting with the broken contract, the one with the flawed logic, our proxy now interacts with the correct contract and it interacts with, with this one using the state that it has stored in the proxy contract. That is how you can use the third web extensions to upgrade your smart contracts. 
If you enjoyed this video, please like the video, subscribe to the Third Web YouTube channel. We're putting out incredible content for Web3 builders. And don't forget to join the Third Web Discord. The entire Third Web team is there waiting for you. Join the Discord. Can't wait to see you there.